Hello everyone and welcome to episode 47 of my Guild Wars 2 series. We are currently on our Savari Necromancer and today we're going to head into chapter 4 of the personal story and this is the last time that we will be doing chapter 4 of the personal story because we started with the vigil and we did that mission and then we did the Order of Whispers in that mission and today we are going to be doing the Durman Priory and we will be completing that mission. So that will be all three of the different chapter 4s of the personal story that we can do and then we will be heading on to the next stage of the game. But just like the last two times that we played through this, let's go ahead and go to Lion's Arch and then we just have our like basic introductory mission here where I'll go ahead and talk to Kaith for a brief moment because we are a Savari and then we can go ahead and meet our Durman Priory friends. So if you were to talk to Kaith, she says they are frozen in that moment, that one second when we split apart. Why can't they move beyond it? I don't understand. And we can say a death leaves a wound in the survivors. As a pale tree mourned when Rianok died, so too do they mourn. And then she says they are wasting time while the dragons grow stronger. I must find a way to make them see. And then we will say, we will. You are not alone, Kaith. And she says, not alone because you are here. Yes, I will hold on to that through the long nights ahead. Take care, my friend. You will hear from me soon. You can say, I'll be waiting. And then that is finishing the first part of this mission here, where we get our special black line chest key. And then let's go ahead and meet the Durman Priory. So we can check our mail because we just got a new letter from a Magister Siren titled A New Friend. Novice, I'm so excited to meet you. You must have wonderful stories to tell. I can't wait to hear them. I've been assigned to escort you to the Durman Priory, so meet me by the Black Lion Trading Company headquarters in Lion's Arch, and we'll get started on a grand adventure, Siren. So let's go ahead and go to the Black Lion Trading Company headquarters, which in New Lion's Arch, it is right here, and in Old Lion's Arch, it's pretty close to the spot of the world. Let's go ahead and enter in this mission, and then meet Magister Siren who of course is going to be our mentor in the German Priory. So let's go ahead and come up here and talk to Steward Gix, who is another member of the German Priory. And he says, welcome to the German Priory novice. And you can say, excuse me, who are you? And he says, my name is Gix and I'm the German Priory's steward. You'll be seeing a lot more of me, I promise you. Have a good day now. And you can say, ah, I see. The German Priory is a bastion of history containing the collected wisdom of the ages. For 200 years, we've stood upon a foundation of lore, research, and exploration. When Lion's Arch was flooded by the rise of the nation of Or, our forebearers rescued the city's survivors. salvaged knowledge that would otherwise have been lost. Now as the dragons ravage ever greater expanses of Tyria, we must do even more. We must discover the truths that Tyria needs to survive. Where the dragons came from, why, and how to end their threat. The Priory is dedicated to learning. Siren. One of our most cunning scholars will provide tutelage to help you gain wisdom that you will need. Dermond, our founder, said it best. Your power is only equal to the sum of your knowledge. If that's true, then we're Tyria's best hope to survive the darkness gathering on the horizon. Welcome to the Dermond Priory. So a little bit of a quick story and a bit about me. I feel a lot of loyalty to the Vigil because my first two mains, including the main that I currently have right now, are members of the Vigil. So I kind of feel like I'm um, like a Vigil player. That's like the order that I personally belong to. But I think out of all three of the orders, I like the Durman Priory just a little bit more. And I kind of wish I considered myself more of a Durman Priory player because I think I like them just a little bit more than the Vigil, though they are pretty neck and neck to me. But 
I do definitely love the Dermot Priory a lot because I love lore and story as you see a lot on my YouTube channel and as I highlight a lot in this Let's Play series. And the Dermot Priory is really cool for a variety of different reasons. Two I will point out is the founder, Dermot, is a relatively important character from the original Guild Wars. And then of course there is a stone dwarf that is part of the Dermot Priory. The last stone dwarf that we know of on the surface world because he stayed up to basically kind of like help out the other races and to share his knowledge of the world. Ogden Stone Healer who is another super important character from Guild Wars 1 that you actually play alongside with in the Guild Wars 1 campaign and is still here in Guild Wars 2 which is really fun. But let's go ahead and come into the Black Lion headquarters right here and let's go ahead and talk to our mentor who's going to be hanging out with us a lot. Must be the new novice I was sent to retrieve. I'm a magister of the order, but we don't need to use titles. Just call me Serum. Happy to meet you. I'm looking forward to working with the Dermond Priory. It's nice to see that you're enthusiastic. I know I'm supposed to take you straight back to the Priory, but I'd like to take a little side trip. While I was waiting for you, Explorer Kett was telling me this really interesting story about an old dwarven tomb. And guess what? It's right on our way. I'll still take you to meet Steward Gix at the main Priory building, but I want to have a bit of fun first. Magister Siren, you're not listening to me. We don't even know if the story is true. What if this tomb doesn't even exist? What if it's just a legend? Oh, Ket, stop being a spoil sport. If I ignore this, those skulky dredge might find the tomb first. And how would that turn out? They'd destroy it. Come on. It won't hurt anything to go look around a bit. The novice doesn't mind, right? Exploring an ancient tomb on my first day in the Order. It sounds fun. I don't mind at all. Then it's settled. I'll meet you at Molent Summit, novice. Don't keep me waiting, okay? My apologies for the ice machine in the background, but we have a special little side story that we can go on here with Magister Siren because of course she, as we can tell, is a very like kind of fun and adventurous and like lighthearted spirit that we will be able to kind of get to know a little bit more about. And of course, instead of going straight to the German Priory, we're going to break a couple of rules and kind of go explore a dwarven tomb at Mullen Summit, which I believe we have been to but not on this character, we were there on our Norn. So let's go ahead and exit out of Lion's Arch and then we can go ahead and make our way towards Lornar's Pass. Over here on the southeastern side of Lion's Arch, we can see the start of the Shiver Peak Mountains. And I don't believe we have gone through this map portal yet in this Let's Play series, but let's go ahead and just run up here a little bit. And then I'm pretty sure I pointed it out, but we can come over here and then we can head through this map portal that's going to take us pretty close to the Dermot Priory. But of course, we're not going to go into the Priory. We're going to go ahead and run over towards Molent Summit. So here's the Dermot Priory right there. But let's go ahead and drop down here a little bit. And if you take a look at our map, we are going to go ahead all the way over here. So I guess in a way, it is kind of on our way to the Dermot Priory because we're going to go over here and then we're going to loop back around. But... I guess it is kind of going out of our way, but we don't have to tell Steward Gix about that. Just running through all these maps, I just leveled up to level 42, so we can go ahead and grab a special Aqua Breather that we do not have the skin for, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick that one, and then we can equip that right there. My inventory on each one of my characters is such a mess, I should probably try to fix these. But here we are at Molent Summit, and of course we have this Priory Camp right here. If you remember, we came through here when we were doing map completion in this area. But we can enter the story mission of Dredging Up the Past, where we have a photo of Student Kicks right there. And then let's go ahead and chat with Magister Syrian and see what she has to say. Look at these glorious snow-dusted mountains. I love the Shiver Peaks. They're so magnificent. Can you believe the ancient dwarves thought this was a good place for a tomb? It feels so alive. Such a strange choice. It's beautiful. But I'll admit, I don't know much about dwarves. What's so interesting about this tomb? The dwarves are almost extinct, but in their time, they knew a lot about the dragons. The Priory studies dwarven tombs to learn as much as we can. This tomb's completely unexplored. If there hadn't been a little earthquake, it would have stayed buried beneath rocks and ice. 
Hecht's old scroll said this was the tomb of a dwarven prince. It might have... Uh-oh. Look at those dig marks. Dredge. Shoots and thorns. I knew the dredge would find this place. That's why I wanted to come right away. See, the dredge were once enslaved by dwarves. They'll destroy anything dwarven. Once this cave opened up, they probably flocked here like jackdaws to a bone. And we'd better hurry. Hey, do you hear that? Siren, watch out! So we are being attacked by dredge right now, and of course, as Siren just said, the dredge were once enslaved by the dwarves, and we are going to go ahead and fight back against the dredge that are kind of trying to eradicate everything about the dwarves that exists. But we have talked a lot about this, but let's go ahead and try to summon our minions here and then we can become a little bit more powerful and then we can clear out this ambush and then we can go into the tomb. So we want to find out if the tome is dwarven in origin and we have to kind of look out for any dredge that are going to be coming around here. Of course there's an excavator right there and it looks like there is a bunch of dredge right here as well. So let's go ahead and clear them all out and we see that there's a barrel right there and some other stuff that we can explore further into the tomb. Let's go ahead and try to clear all of these dredge out right here with our fancy shroud abilities right here and we can just obliterate all of them. I definitely really love playing as a necromancer and I'm really excited to unlock some of the elite specializations for the necromancer because there is a decent amount of like fun gameplay we can do with all the different specs. Go ahead and clear out the last dredge and then let's interact with this barrel. searching maybe we can find more and then there's more stuff right here so let's interact with this another artifact mm. this you has idiots, royal we were too late this too was an ability think you can find anything else and a ton of dredge coming in, so let's go ahead and deal with them too. Looks like our bone fiend died. And I should probably switch this bone fiend out for a different minion or maybe another skill because we've been with these ones for a while. But I might do that when we go back out into the open world on this character. But let's go ahead and push down here a little bit more and we can find another artifact down there. So there are some priory explorers in here as well. So it looks like Steward Gix knew about this little bit of a tomb that's going on right here and he sent a little bit of like a secret expedition to come down here but we stumbled upon them while we were here and we're just going to play it off as we were sent by Gix but I'm sure Gix will find out about that. Who are you? What are you doing here? Dwarf sympathizers I'll bet. We want to know the importance of this tomb. What can you tell us? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Come. Let's show them the meaning of buried and forgotten. So our bone fiend is dead again. Let's go ahead and summon him up and then we can head into Shroud and we can take down these two dredge, one of which is the leader of this operation or one of the leaders. So let's go ahead and take him down and then we can try to figure out what he knows afterwards. Let's go ahead and go to, into our lich form here and let's go ahead and summon all of our special minions right there and then just launch everything that we can at this leader. So we have some unstable horrors that are spawning that we can go ahead and just obliterate this boss with. And then let's go ahead and interrogate this dredge. That talking tree's gone crazy. Get it off me. I'll tell you anything. Just let me go. This talking tree will tear your limbs off, buddy. Is this all you found in the tomb or did your people destroy some of the relics? Those relics are nothing compared to we, we tried to shatter it, but we couldn't. It was too powerful. Nothing could harm it. Destroy what? Another relic? One like these? Junk! No, no. It was a sword. We sent it to the southern ruins, hoping to find some way to destroy it. Death to the dwarves! A sword? Hmm. Maybe the writing on these relics will tell us more. I bet Gix can translate it. Let's head back to the Priory and ask him. So we have completed this mission, let's go ahead and return to the Priory and have a chat with Steward Gix. Don't worry about Steward Gix, I'll handle him. He'll be mad for all of 3.5 seconds. So we have Siren right here and we have Kekt and Gix up here at the heart of the Priory. So let's go ahead and kind of see what Gix has to say about our escapade here. One's knowledge cannot go beyond one's experience. Ah, Magister Siren, you've taken your time getting here. Come. Introduce me to our new friend, Magister Siren. Yet again, you neglect your duty to go on an adventure. 
You're completely out of control, you blasted weed. You're very lucky my expedition team needed your help to get out of there. I'm going to go easy on you. This time. But if I ever find out that you ever risk another novice's life on one of your little curiosities, I'll prune your ears. Mark my words. Ah, our newcomer. I'm sorry for all the trouble. Siren is something of a firecracker. The novice did very well, Steward. Don't fuss. Look, we even recovered these unusual artifacts. Won't you translate the writing for us, Gix? Don't wheedle me, you leaf addle reprobate. Why I tolerate him? No. Oh. oh, my goodness. This is fascinating. Tell me, was anything missing from the cave? Yes. The dredge had taken a weapon from the cave. That's a wonderful guess. Guess something else, Gix. This is fun. By the cogs of creation. They took the sanguinary blade. It's a legendary sword made of frozen blood. The weapon was lost when the stone summit dwarves vanished. A sword made of blood? What kind of blood could possibly be made into a weapon? The worst kind. Dragon blood. Magister, novice, you must find that blade and bring it safely to the Priory. We're on it, sir. You can count on us. So this is a really cool kind of story that we are going on now where we are going to try to retrieve a sword made out of dragon's blood. So let's go ahead and go to Mist Riven Gorge which is located just north of the Priory and we can try to find this blade that the dredge basically took from this place that we were just at and brought it further north here. So we have the story mission Bad Blood here that we just loaded into and it's actually at this little bit of a mini dungeon that we explored earlier in our Let's Play series when we were here doing some explorations in this area and of course this is a dwarven ruin so let's go ahead and run through here and we can talk to Siren and kind of do this mini dungeon but in a story mission. Look at this place. It must be tremendously old. Centuries even. Older than that. The Dwarven civilization lasted for more than 2,000 years, and this might be one of their first structures. It's so sad that the Dwarves all turned to stone and went to fight the dragons. Sad, but brave. The Dredge brought the sword here to find a way to destroy it. We'd better hurry before they succeed. You're absolutely right. First, we have to cross that windy bridge. I can use my magic to fly, but you'll have to foot it. Those flags and the torches flutter when the wind rises, so watch them carefully. Use the walls for cover. Keep your footing, go as fast as you can, and don't worry, it'll be cherry. So let's go ahead and make our way through the cave here. And something really interesting that Syrian actually said was that the Dwarven civilization is 2,000 years old, and I think that is actually a mistake, and they are more like at least over 10,000 years old. So I think that's a little bit of like a mistake with like the writing in the story mission. Why would anyone want to live underground? If you ask me, both dwarves and Asura have some serious issues. And let's go ahead and run along this way, where we now have a bit of a jumping area, but also a ghostly ice strike right here. must be the ghost of Dagnar's Drake Mount. I don't think it's noticed us. Ignore it and find a way to get up to that ledge. You never learned that trick. Huh. Well, looks like you'll have to climb. I think I see a path to the top. I'll mark it for you. Follow the trail of sparks. And of course, Dagnar Stone Pate is a pretty important character for the Guild Wars 2 like lore and story of like this franchise. But let's go ahead and just make our way up this area right here and then we can come up here and just a couple more jumps there and let's go ahead and talk to Siren here I knew you could do it. there are a ton of dead dredge right here which is a little concerning and we have a son of Zvanir right there on the ground and a few traps, so let's go ahead and just try to dodge our way through here. Tomb Raiders, as opposed to Tomb Researchers. We're the good guys, they're the bad guys. Get 
So let's go ahead and get the bad guys right here. There are two sons of Swan here kind of guarding the entrance to the end of the tomb right here. So we can deal with them. And then let's go downstairs and we can try to see if there is like a leader down here that we can talk to or fight. And then see if the sword is down here as well. So we have the Son of Swanier that kind of just turned this Norn into an Ice Brood right here that we can go ahead and fight. But the other Norn sadly disappeared so we can try to figure out where he went hopefully from this Norn but we're going to have to fight and figure that out. So let's go ahead and just launch all the abilities that we can at this Norn and then we can go ahead and bring him down towards 0% health. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to like defeat him here or if we are going to have the opportunity to kind of interrogate him a little bit and it looks like we killed him and let's go ahead and talk to Siren. Stieg Frostbeard? I've heard of him. He's a son of Svania. They're dragon cultists and, and Stieg is a mean one. If he's got the sword it'll be nothing but trouble. Do you see what happened when the blade cut his friend? It turned that Norn into a monster. I saw. That looked like dragon corruption to me. I guess the sanguinary blade really is made of dragon's blood. Gix was right. That's bad news for us, too. That sword will corrupt anyone that holds on to it for too long. Before we retrieve it for the Derman Priory, we'd better find a way to protect ourselves from the corruption. What about the sword's original scabbard? The dwarves must have made it strong enough to contain the blade. True. But how do we find that scabbard? It might be easier to create something of our own, using Priory knowledge. Give it a rumble in your brain and let me know when you've made a choice. So we have a decision that we can make right now where we can either try to find the scabbard or we can build a containment device for the sword. And I think I want to try and go on an adventure and find like the sheath for the sword, the original one, because that sounds really cool. And it might take us to like an ancient, like another ancient tome that we can kind of explore. So let's go ahead and complete this story mission and I am probably going to pick this staff and I will replace the staff and we just leveled up to level 43 which gives us yet another reward so let's go ahead and pick that and we can replace that delete that and let's go ahead and meet Siren at Foss Lake in southern Lornars Pass. So we are now entering into a new area of Lornars Pass that we have not spent any time exploring yet and when we come through on our probably our Norn character we will be able to explore the southern parts of Lorna's Pass but we get a little bit of a sneak peek at it right now as we enter into the story mission the stone sheath so let's go ahead and t talk to Siren here and see if we can find this missing sheath. Isn't it amazing? Hundreds of years ago this was a proud stone summit fortress. They were a group of xenophobic dwarves cruel brutal and unyielding they're the ones that enslave the dredge. Well, mostly. Now look at it. Everything it stood for, both good and bad, has been washed away by time. I'm continually amazed at Tyria's resilience. The Stone Summit kept their most valued artifacts here. The Priory retrieved quite a bit, until those nasty pirates moved into the area. You think the scabbard's still down there? I'm sure of it, novice. The question is, how do we convince the pirates to let us poke around? Buy them some beer? <gasps> oh, convince them we're just shrubs. I like the idea of convincing them, but I think we should use our convincing weapons. Come on. What could possibly go wrong? I defy those pirates to stop us. You hear me? Defy. So let's go ahead and swim into the lake here and you can swim all the way south and we might have to be interacting with some pirates on this mission so there's like one right there that we can probably just take out to get out of the way and then we can head past this quaggan village here and try to find the uh, missing sheath amongst this old and ancient stone summit fortress that exists here 
So that pirate's taken care of. I guess I'll go ahead and summon my minions right here. There are some more pirates right here as well. These poor Quaggan live so close to the pirates right here and hopefully they don't trouble the Quaggan too much. But let's go ahead and try to take out these two pirates as we're kind of trapped right here on this net, but the net's going away now. So our immobilized should go away as well. And we can take care of that pirate. And then I notice we don't have an elite skill right here, but I don't think we have anything to replace this elite skill with right now. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. And we discovered this Quaggan village. Let's go ahead and try not to set off any of the mines in the water here and just make our way further south. So we can see a dwarven building right here. Let's go ahead and swim through it and we should have made it to the old dwarven fortress right here. We can deal with this pirate and then there are a variety of different dwarven relics all around here. So let's go ahead and interact with this one and we can pick it up. And looks like it was nothing we needed right there. So let's go ahead and try to find another one. It could be anywhere. Oh, a dwarven scabbard's right here. Let's go ahead and pick up the scabbard. And then let's escape back north with the scabbard back to where we started. So let's go ahead and just swim this way right here. And then we can also avoid any of the mines. It looks like some quaggan came and helped us with the pirates right there. There are more pirates over here as well. So let's go ahead and quickly deal with this one and then try to evade past these mines. So the mines are out of the way right there. Let's go ahead and swim through the Quaggan village. I see another pirate coming in right here. Looks like they haven't been too much of a problem. They're kind of just coming in like one by one for the most part. Of course, we have a few different Quaggans all around here that are helping us out, which is nice. And it looks like the pirates do kind of mess with the Quaggans a little bit, which is very sad and unfortunate because the Quaggans are such like a nice race that we'll be able to get to explore more of in a future episode. Let's go ahead and swim towards these two right here. And then I believe this is kind of like the final stretch to get back to shore. So I see no more pirates around here. Let's go ahead and just swim all the way this way. And then we can go ahead and get back on land. And then hopefully we can talk to Siren and kind of examine the scabbard that we just picked up and bring it back to the Dermon Priory. So let's go ahead and talk to Siren about the scabbard. Now that's what I call combat archaeology. Well done, novice. We retrieved the scabbard. Now how do we find the sanguinary blade? Oh, that's right. I totally forgot to tell you about that part. Oops. The Arcanist back at the Priory used a scrying spell to track Steeg. They told me that he's hiding near Black Baal's mill. We're also on double secret probation. Turns out Gix was mad about us not reporting after we went to the tomb. Wait, we were supposed to report in? Sirin? If we don't find Steeg Frostbeard soon, the sword will corrupt everyone around him. It'll turn them all into monsters. We've got to hurry to Black Baal's mill. I'll meet you there. And Sirin, don't forget to bring the scabbard. So we have completed this mission and now we can confront the Norn that we fought two missions ago. So let's go ahead and grab our reward quickly. And then we can go to Black Barrow's Mill, which is just south of Foss Lake right here. So let's go ahead and leave out of this instance and we can head down over there. So we can go ahead and come across this bridge here, which I very much like the view from this bridge. And then we have the mill just up this hill right here. So let's go ahead and walk around here a little bit. And this area of Lawrence Pass is incredibly beautiful. I just love all the different like pieces of scenery and like this area because I very much like snowy mountains and I very like kind of foresty green regions and the Southern Lawrence Pass while this is a flashbang, Southern Lawrence Pass is like a combination of those two different environments but we have some census vanya right here with mattress or siren so let's go ahead and chat with her and chat with this vanya about what's going on hello there norn we're here from the derman priory and your friend steek has something that belongs to us we're just here for frostbeard bring us the sword he carries and we won't hurt you pathetic little bookworms steek frostbeard is mighty he will attack Lion Touch, and we will show you all dragon power. Steeg's blood sword is a holy relic of the dragon, Jorman. The dragon blesses Steeg for his faithful service. He will lead us to victory. It's not too late. Please, think about what you're doing. The dragon may give you power, but in exchange, he's made you slaves. 
A commanded dragon in his time of triumph? <laughs> Why would we do that? Lion's Arch is filled with innocent people. You can't do this. They aren't listening, novice. Time to switch to plan B. Go get them! So let's go ahead and attack all the different sons of one year around here and we can kind of just work our way through this camp and try to find a Steeg and get the sword. So I'm going to go ahead and summon both of my minions. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to wait to summon my second minion there. And I'll do it now. And that is a very good question, Magister Siren. And we can go ahead and just fight these two sons of Swanir that kind of came rushing in. Of course, we know the sons of Swanir like worship the Elder Dragon of Jormag. And we can go ahead and try to kind of fight back against the dragon's corruption here. And let's go ahead and fight the senses one year that Steak Frostbeard is turning into monsters and can turn into kind of like a monster ourselves right now with this lich form. And we can go ahead and summon all of our minions and we can just launch all these different like projectile weapons at this Norn right here. And he himself transforms into an ice brood and regains all of his health. So let's go ahead and launch these all again. And let's go ahead and come into our shroud form here. Another transform that we can do as a necromancer and just launch all of our abilities at this Norn and try to bring him down to 0% health, which should be pretty easy with all the conditions and different attacks we can do. And then we can go ahead and pick up the Sanguinary Blade and then let's try to, oh, we have to defeat the last follower here. So let's go ahead and defeat the Sons of Swan here. And then let's try to escape out of this area and head back towards the Derman Priory after talking to Siren. Well done, novice. The Sanguinary Blade is ours, and Lion's Arch is safe from Stieg Frostbeard. It's hard to believe that Stieg was willing to see all his known friends die just to keep the power of the Sanguinary Blade. That's not hard for me to believe at all, novice. It's typical of the idiots who serve Elder Dragons. The dragons are a blight. They don't care about anything but their hunger. Their followers are just... bad. Even if we find a way to save the world from the dragons, I sometimes wonder if we'll ever find a way to save us from ourselves. When Gix told me I was going to be mentoring a new novice, I thought it would be an incredibly boring task. But you know what? I really like you. You're willing to try new things, and you've got a good head on your shoulders. Thanks, Siren. I have to admit, this has been a lot of fun. Cherry! Come on, let's get the sword back to Gix. After that, we'll work on saving the world. So that is this story mission complete. And of course, this was definitely a little bit of a fun few missions that we just did, where we were kind of just thrown straight into the action of like going into like some dwarven tombs and then having to fight against the Sons of Svan here while also fighting some dredge and we haven't spent too much time at like the Derman Priory doing like maybe like any orientation things that we were supposed to be doing. We have just been out in the field with our new mentor here and this is our third and final mentor of the three different mentors that we have in the personal story depending on what order you pick and I really love all three of these characters and they're like three of the like most popular fan favorite characters in Guild Wars 2. A lot of people just love them a lot but let's go ahead and now return to the Derman Priory where we can go ahead and return the Sanguinary Blade to the Priory now with the Scabbard and we can chat with the Gix and we have this mission here called Library Science with a really cool concept art of the Derman Priory kind of more like what it's supposed to look like in lore compared to what it looks like right now and let's go ahead and talk to Siren and Gix right here. At last the Sanguinary Blade. I shudder to think of the damage it would have wrought without your aid. You've both done well. Consider yourselves off probation. Further, novice, I hereby promote you to the rank of explorer, with all the rights and privileges, etc., etc. I'd like you to continue your partnership with Siren. Perhaps you can keep this deciduous do-gooder out of trouble. Thank you, Stuart Gix. I'd be happy to collaborate with Siren. We work well together. Poor Gix. You're just jealous that you're stuck in here being leadery and responsible while we're having all the fun. Yes, yes. I'm sure that's exactly what it is. 
be that as it may. I must rely on you two for another project. Your next endeavor is a research assignment involving one of the lesser races of Tyria. Do try not to teach them bad habits, Siren. Hmm? Explorer, get a briefing from Siren and choose which species you'd like to study. Now, go. So just like the last two endings to chapter four of the personal story, can we can go ahead and pick one of the lesser races of Tyria in order to help. And on this character, on our Safari Necromancer, I want to pick the Quaggin. So let's go ahead and select the Quaggin, and then we can go ahead and kind of explore and study Quaggin culture the next time that we play any other personal story on this character. And we'll lock that in and we'll complete this mission where we can get our final reward here, which is some new boots, which we can go ahead and select some stats for. I'll go ahead and pick Berserkers because that's kind of just what I'm going for, for some simple stats through the start of the game here. And then we got a letter from Kaith right here titled Whispers in the Dream. Valiant, I've intercepted reports that you are doing well. Your order praises you highly. This is for the best. We must unify. We must all unify or Tyria will blacken and die. Aaron Rathok searches the catacombs for lost power. Zoja still fights for Snaff's legacy while Logan falls back to Kryda and to his queen. I do not understand why they cannot move forward, why they are so obsessed with the past. How can we make them focus on the future if they do not? It will soon escape us forever and the dragons will succeed. I must follow them. I have to watch and understand. There's too much at risk for us to fail. So let's go ahead and get our level up reward for level 44 right here. And then I am going to go ahead and clear out my inventory a little bit. But while I take a brief moment to clear out my inventory right here, I want to take a moment to talk about our next step in the Guild Wars 2 personal story and kind of like our Guild Wars 2 Let's Play series right now, where we have basically been doing Act 2 of the personal story for the last like seven episodes now. And we have just finished all three of the chapter four missions of the personal story and we are now completed all with so that big. and of course the next kind of like big chapter that we have to do in the personal story is chapter five so we will go ahead and be doing all that stuff where we'll be doing some more map completion and then we'll do a mission here and then a more map completion and a mission because that's kind of like the structure that i've been enjoying for this series and we'll kind of just like do that all the way through chapter five but before we start chapter five of the personal story i want to take what I believe is going to be the next three episodes of our series to really dive deep into the dungeons of Guild Wars 2 and I want to explore the first three dungeons of the game and if you come into our LFG panel right here we can see all the content in the game that we can find groups for but we have all these different dungeons right here where we have the Ascalonian Catacombs which we can do at level 30 we have Codicus Manor, which we can do at level 40, and we have Twilight Arbor, which we can do at level 50. And these are the first three dungeons in the game. And then when we come down here to Sorrow's Embrace, that'll be level 60. And I'm kind of going to look at these ones further down the line in the future. But I just want to look at the first three here, which I'll probably do on this character. And I'm not sure if I'll do them at like this time of night or if I'll do it like during the day. And if it is during the day, I might just like kind of record it and then talk over it later. And I'm also going to be recording all this stuff for to turn into like lore videos for like my other series on my YouTube channel. But we can go ahead and see there's no groups of them right now because dungeons are kind of like a little bit older content that not a lot of people do anymore, which is why I kind of have to do it during like peak hours. But we are going to dive deep into those dungeons and then we will pick up with chapter 5 of the personal story to chapter 5 and then we'll probably look at a couple more dungeons so on and so forth. But I hope you all have enjoyed playing through this episode of my Guild Wars 2 series with me as we explore the Durman Priory and officially completed chapter 4 of the Guild Wars 2 personal story. And I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Remember to drink some water check your posture, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time in the world of Tyria. Goodbye.